Man, you guys are amazing. That was very kind, Pastor James. Thank you. And um, man, it's just, it's just awesome to be here. You don't know just how blessed I was to be a part of your praise and worship just now. I mean, we obviously we've been praising and worshiping the last few nights, but it's cool leading people, but it's something else just being in it. So I want to honour you guys this morning for worshipping Jesus the way that you have. I want to honour the team. Brilliant job. And um, happy birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. Big six. That's amazing. That is truly amazing what God has done over six years. I want to honour Pastor James and Kate. Honestly, what like, I don't know if you know, but things like this don't just happen. God does it. God builds His church, but He uses people, amen? And He uses people that surrender and have faith and partner with God. And so, and we don't just treat that lightly, but we, we go after people that God is using. And so this morning, and, and every opportunity you have, by the way, but we're gonna take this opportunity right now. Would you join with me in honouring your pastors and absolutely thanking God for them? Come on, you can turn the volume way up on that. It's... You know, he just mentioned it. I've known them since since they were in Australia. But seeing you can you can tell walking into this place, what God is doing here is special. God's touch is, is on this place. And and again, that's because of you guys and the way you honor God, but it's because of the way that you're led. So so special. Don't take it for granted. Enjoy it. But treat it as precious. Because it is precious. You know, I always take the opportunity to honour my pastors as well. They're, they're not here. I'm sure you would love it if they were. But, but um, it's an absolute dream to be a part of their team. And my life was changed by their ministry. So to be a part of it is, is a dream come true. And I, I always honour Pastor Russell and Pastor Sam for the way that God has used them in Planet Shakers and literally all around the world. So yeah, can you give it up for them as well? Literally the kind of people that have changed the trajectory in a nation, you know, for a generation. So it's amazing. And uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't gonna share anything about this, but I don't know if you just did that song for me or what, but I'll take it. (laughs) And the anthem at the end there as well. I mean, it was just like, bam, bam. I haven't heard enough of that song, so it's good to hear it again this morning. (laughs) I'm just joking. We sing the anthem a lot, but you guys, I reckon you guys do it better actually. So that's good. But the great outpouring, you know, I'm not mentioning this because I had anything to do with it, but it's just, man, I was just bawling my eyes out of the front there. I couldn't control that in the middle of singing that song together because you got to understand, I mean, you were saying it was an anthem for you guys, but I remember the moment. I remember the moment playing drums in our church with nobody in there. Just an empty concrete room few weeks out from Pentecost Sunday and, and I was just thinking about the fact that Pentecost Sunday, we just celebrated Easter, Pentecost Sunday was coming up and there was nobody in church because we were in lockdown. And in the middle of worship, these words just, just came into my mind, come upon me. Just fill me with your power again. You said to wait for power to clothe me. And I just, I was just, we were playing a different song, but those words just went over in my mind and at the end of worship ran around to, Joth's studio, I use it when he's not watching. I went in there and Pastor Sam was already, was already just sitting there at the end of worship and I just jumped on the piano and started trying to put these things down. And then the next few weeks we began to sing it in church, but when there was nobody there and I remember thinking like, God, what is this? What are we declaring when it's not our reality right now? It's not what we're living in. Let churches be filled again. God is empty. But I've discovered over time is that God will give you a word about where you're going, not just about where you're at. And God will give you a declaration for what He is wanting to bring about and what He's going to do. And you just never know, man. It just, it blows me away that God would, God would just give you a little idea when you don't know that anybody's gonna hear that idea. And here we are halfway across the world. And I had no idea that you'd be joining in that anthem with us and that God would speak to you through that as well. People don't write songs, God just gives us songs. It's Him that's worthy of honour, but it never ceases to amaze me the way that God will use those things to reproduce time after time. I think we're gonna 
come back and sing that at the end again. Again, even if it's just for me, that's fine. I'm sure it will be for all of us. Would you just lift your hands to Him? His presence is here so strong this morning. And I don't know about you, but that's what I'm after. If it's your first time here, we're so glad that you're here, but we're believing that you're gonna encounter the King of Kings this morning. That's what this is all about. As your, your hands are raised, let me pray for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here in this place. Thank you that you've already been moving as we've been praising and worshipping you. But now would you come and speak to us around your Word? There is nothing in our hearts that you can't move this morning. There is nothing in our minds that you can't change. Come and transform us by the renewing of our minds because we wanna be the people that you've called us to be, God. We don't wanna stay where we're at. We don't wanna be at the level that we've been at. We wanna go after you and we wanna change, God. We're hungry to change. We're hungry to become more like you, Jesus. So have your way here this morning, Holy Spirit, from the front to the back and the left to the right. Have your way in every heart, every mind this morning. And we give You praise for what You're gonna do. We give You praise that You are so good. We give You praise that You are so faithful. We give You praise that the best is yet to come. It's been an amazing six years, but the best is yet to come. If you believe that, come on, give Him a shout of praise this morning. In Jesus' Name. Man, you guys are awesome. I just got to go over here for a minute. My guy. Anyway, you can, we'll never move on if you don't leave, so be gone. No, we are amazing. You can take your seats. So good to be with you. Well, I take this opportunity to, to preach and as I was praying about uh, what, what does God want to do this morning? I felt God give me a, a word that, honestly, I've ne- I don't think I've ever preached about this before, but, uh, but I felt that God wanted to do something this morning, you know. Um, I wondered whether I should do the second instalment of the series that you started last week, but I thought that would be a bit weird for a guest preacher. If you weren't here last week, I'm not, in, don't worry. Is there a podcast? I don't know, just ask somebody else, but I'm not going on that. I want to preach to you this morning on the topic, for the win, F-T-W, for the win. But I want to preach to you really about this word, endurance. Hope you can understand it with my Australian accent. Pastor James would say, endurance. I don't know. It's not much different, is it? Endurance. Hebrews, oh, actually, I've got in my notes, I should show you a picture of my family. I don't know if we have that there. I've got a wife and two beautiful girls. Do we have that picture? I sent it to them this morning. There, look, that's them on that side. That's my wife in the middle. And uh, just in case you. That's our two and a half year old. Her name is Elle Joy. And you can see by the look in her face, she is full of joy. It's kind of aggressive joy, but it's joy. And, uh, and that's Micah. This is, picture was a few months ago. She's 10 months old now. And uh, they are beautiful. And I miss them very much. My wife, Susanna, I'll see you soon. Anyway, that's my, that's my family. And uh, we are just so blessed by what God has done. God has given us two beautiful girls. I wanna, anyway, back to the Word. Preach you on this Word endurance. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, do you love the Word of God? I do. Hebrews chapter 12, it says, therefore, Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. By the way, who's the great cloud of witnesses? If you rewind a little bit, you run it back in Hebrews chapter 11. Anybody know what Hebrews chapter 11 is about? It's one of my favourite passages of Scripture. It's about the faith, exactly, the great hall of fame of faith or hall of faith. It's just about all these great men and women of the Old Testament who walked in faith And it comes straight out of talking about their testimony straight into this passage right now that says, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, it's talking about these people, men and women of faith. Since we're surrounded by them and since we have their testimony, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, or another version says, so easily entangles. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider Him who endured 
from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. It even says it three times in that passage, this word endurance or to endure, right? It says that we are to run this race with endurance and the way that we are to do that is to put our eyes on Jesus. And if we put our eyes on Jesus, we realise that He ran His race and He endured. And the reason that He could endure is because He was looking to the reward. And if we understand that the example of Jesus was that He looked to His reward, then we'll understand as well that the way that we make it through this life and not just make it through, but make it through victorious is that we endure, but we do that by also looking to our reward in looking to Jesus. But let me start by talking about this word in endurance. It comes from a word, I think it's pronounced hupomone. <clears throat> That's my Greek. I think it's pronounced hupomone, which literally means constancy or steadfastness or endurance, right? 29 times it's actually translated as patience. I, honestly, I hate that word, patience. It's one of those things that my wife is great at, but I'm working on, you know. Patience, patience. But honestly, it's translated as patient endurance. Patience talks about waiting for something and endurance talks about keeping on going. So patient endurance is to keep on going while you're waiting. To keep on going while you're waiting. In other words, don't give up on the journey. Don't give up while you're on this journey. And the reason that that's important for us to know is because this life is a journey, right? That's so important because I don't know about you, we heard it before, but we've, we've all got issues, right? I'll put my hand up, I've got some issues. I'm not afraid to say that I'm still on a journey as well. This life of faith that we're on, is a, it's a journey, right? We haven't made it yet. We don't have it all together yet. I thank God that we're better today than we were yesterday, but I also thank God that I'm gonna be better tomorrow than I am today because I'm on a journey. And this journey, you know, you realise in life is, is not so, so straight as what we thought it was. We thought, man, I, the first time I encountered God, I, I remember being in a Planet Shakers conference and encountering God and, and God began to stir in my heart that He had a great destiny for my life. And, and so I began to dream of what that might look like. And honestly, it looked, it looked a lot smoother than the reality of the journey that I lived out. I thought, amazing, God planted something on my heart. I'm just gonna go do it. But I didn't know that there'd be a whole journey in the process. You know, I'm sure some of our, our leaders in here would say the same thing. It's amazing what God would put on your heart, but this thing is a journey. It's an amazing journey. It's the greatest adventure, but we're on a journey. In fact, the Bible talks about the fact that this Christian life is like a race. Does anybody like running here? Anybody at all actually like running? One, two, I don't believe you. Somebody up there. Nobody likes running. Do you, how many marathon runners do you see running like this? Man, they collapse when they, you know, they win and they still fall over. You know what I mean? People are like, they're sweating. They're, no one's enjoying it. We run because we have to, not because we, no, maybe some people enjoy it. I don't know. But not many people. And so don't be put off this morning. Uh, anybody here <clears throat> think that they are athletes? Any, do we have any athletes? Any athletic people? Pastor James is an athlete. I can see that. Somebody else here? I can see those muscles from here. Not many people. You guys are, you guys are playing it too safe in church. Put up your hand for somebody else. Is there anybody around you that's an athlete or looks like an athlete? See, there you go. Well, don't be put off by this this morning because maybe we don't all identify as like athletic or maybe you don't all love running, but whether we like it or not, this Christian life, this life of faith, the Bible compares it to a race. Don't be put off because when you try and run, maybe you, 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 you have you seen those memes that's like what I think like, what I think I look like when I run versus what I actually look like. You know, and you see those dogs that it's like, or like a stallion, you know, hair blowing back. And then there's a picture of you, you catch sight, your reflection, and you're like, who is that? <laughs> They're a mess. Listen, 
We may not like run because it's, it's, it's all about our strength and what we have and, and we know that it runs out and we know that we don't wanna keep going. We don't wanna put another foot in front of the other, but we're doing it because we know it's good for us. No, this life of faith is not like that because it's not based on my strength. It's not based on my energy. It's not based on, on, on just my discipline. It's not based on the fact that I don't really wanna go to church, but I guess that I should. I don't really wanna be kind to that person, but I guess that I should because I need to be disciplined because it's good for me. If that's the only Christian life, Life that you know, man, you need the Holy Spirit in your life. You need to be refreshed again. You need to be filled with joy again because the Christian life that you and I are called to is full of joy. It's full of passion. It's full of refreshing. It gets better every day and yet it still requires endurance. It still requires endurance. It's so important that we understand this. The Scripture said, run with endurance the race that is set before us. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 to 26 says this, don't you realise that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. What a cool scripture. Run to win. And how do we win for Jesus? Obviously, in this race of faith, the, the, the idea is not to beat those around us. I'm not running against anybody else. I'm not, you know, succeeding in my Christian life when I overtake anybody else. That's not the idea. No, the idea is to make it to the finish line and receive the prize for which I'm called to in this life. The idea is to set my eyes on Jesus and to run after Him. That's why I run with purpose in every step. Amen but we've got to realise that it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's the kind of race that requires endurance. This is bigger than a sprint. You know, um, I used to do little athletics when I was a kid. And uh, I was good at it when I was really little, but then everybody else grew bigger than me. And I, I don't know if I slowed down or they got quicker. I used to win. <laughs> and then everyone else started winning. It's very annoying. Anyway, but a sprint, you know, a sprint is just a short distance race and it requires just a small amount, a quick burst of energy and then you receive the prize. Then you get to the finish line and it's all over. And maybe some of us, when we said yes to Jesus, we thought that we just had our eyes immediately in front of us and so we just took off, but we didn't realise the race that we're in. This is not a sprint that's just a quick burst. This is an endurance race. This is a marathon. And listen, I'm not saying that to, this morning to, to say slow down and just pace yourself. You know, sometimes we have... Uh, we have Christians that have been Christians for a while and we see people that are getting on fire for Jesus. And sometimes people have that attitude where they say, hmm, we'll see. You're passionate now, but just wait a few years until you go through some stuff. Man, I'm so glad that that's not the attitude we have at Favour Church. We say, no, you're passionate now when you just met Jesus. You're gonna be even more passionate as you get to know Him because this journey is amazing. But it is an endurance race. So I'm not saying slow down and pace yourself. I'm reminding you that it's a marathon and not a sprint for one reason. Because if you think it's a sprint, you put your eyes down, you put a quick burst of energy and you put your, you put your attention on an immediate reward. I, I quickly, we'll get this reward. You just put a quick burst of energy and uh, in other words, you're, after, you're in it for what you get right now. But if you're in a marathon, if you're in an, in an endurance race, then you put your head down and you say, this is not going to be about the quick reward. I'm in it for the long haul because I'm in it for a different reward. I'm in it to get to that finish line, to cross that finish line. In other words, if you think that this Christian life of faith is a sprint, then you start to say, man, I'm gonna live for Jesus and He's gonna bless me. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be favoured. I'm gonna be blessed and God's gonna answer that prayer and God's gonna give me that promotion. God's gonna give me that Girlfriend, that boyfriend, I don't know. God's gonna, God's gonna bless me right now. But the moment that something doesn't happen when you think it should happen, you start to second guess God's purpose for your life. Because you thought this thing was a sprint. You thought that God was just gonna do things immediately. Now God will bless you. 
God has favoured you. God has a great plan for your life now. But the Christian life that we are about is not about the immediate benefit. It's about the long-term reward. It's about setting our eyes on eternity and understanding that the reason that I'm running is not for what God can do for me now. It's because I'm running for Jesus. I want that eternal prize. I want that eternal reward. I wanna bring glory to His Name. You prepare for it differently when you understand the race that you're in. Even Jesus ran His race for the reward. That's what we read before. For the joy that was set before Him, He endured the cross. Despising its shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 10 verse 35 says, Therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what, what has been promised. 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 and 8. I love this Scripture because it's Paul as an old man talking to a young man and he's, near, he's at the end of his life. And listen to the way that he talks. He says, I have fought the good fight and I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved His appearing. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of life that I wanna live. When I get to the end of my life, I don't wanna just say, man, I had a blessed life. Man, I, 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 God did great things in my life. I wanna say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I ran for Jesus and I completed this, this life for Jesus. And now, now, I'm getting ready for the reward, the pride. I love preaching about these things because Pastor James mentioned it, but man, in terms of youth pastor years, they're like dog years, you know what I mean? I've been a youth pastor for a long time. Longer than most youth pastors in Australia and um, I love it. But here's the thing. I used to, when I first was a youth pastor, I would preach to what I think young people needed to hear that Friday night. We would run it on Friday night. What do they need to live for Jesus right now? But the longer that I was in youth ministry, the more I realised I don't wanna just preach so you're living for Jesus this week. I wanna preach so that in 20 years time, you won't have just encountered God when you were 15 and now you're backslidden. In 20 years time, you will be running this race for Jesus. You will be enduring whatever has come in your life because of what God did in your life now. We can grow so focused on the immediate and the faster that this world speeds up, man, it seems to be going so fast. It's September. Yet you guys are playing Christmas carols in your malls. We pull them out in like December, you know, when Christmas is. <laughs> Not in the Philippines, I love it. You're like, hmm, it's past halfway of the year. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is like a six month thing. I get it. It's, I'm down with that. I like it. But the faster this world speeds up, the more pressure there is for us to be to, to, to focus on what do I get immediately? What can I gain immediately? What is God going to do immediately? Have I grown immediately? Has something happened in my life immediately? But what we've got to realise is that God is not as focused on the immediate as we are sometimes, even though God can work suddenly, but He zooms out and says, listen, this is an endurance right? So run for Jesus, but you know what? Keep running for Jesus. Keep going for Jesus. What if somebody around you trips and falls and they're not right? Keep running for Jesus. What if you come across some obstacles that you weren't intending on facing? Keep running for Jesus. Decide right now again on this Sunday, I am. this is a whole life thing. I'm being planted in the house of God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come hell or high water, we are not, we're not just, we're not just fair weather Christians. We're every season kind of Christians. We're living for Jesus in COVID and out of COVID. We're running for Jesus no matter what happens in our life. This is an endurance race. It's so important that you prepare for the right event. What do I mean? Man, I remember from Little Athletics, we would go to the state championships. I grew up in Tasmania, so there was like five of us in the state championships. Don't worry, if you knew, you, you would know what I mean. But there's not many people in Tasmania, so it wasn't hard to win, you know. It's me running versus my sisters, you know. And our dog always won, you know. No, I, I went to the state championships and I would get so nervous because they would announce the marshalling for the event. Now, my best event was the 1500 metres. 
Yeah, the 1500 meters. And, and, and they would say, you know, the certain age group, they would say, please head to the marshalling area and I'd be fine. And then I would get so nervous. I'd get butterflies in my stomach and I'd prepared for it. But now we would get there. And even though I'd trained and even though I knew my pace and I knew what I had to run, you would get there. And because everybody was nervous and everybody was, we, we, we all thought we were versing other champions. So everybody would take off so quickly. And it would take a lot of, it take a lot of discipline to go, no, I know my pace. I've got to run my race. I know my pace because I've got to run my race. But wouldn't it be crazy if I went to the 1500 metres thinking that it was a 100 metre sprint? I would have mentally prepared for the wrong event. And we would have crossed 100 metres and, 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 and something inside me would sink when I realised, what do you, I have to keep running? Yes, this is not the 100 metre sprint. This is the 1500 metres and if you've only mentally prepared for that event, then you're going to get discouraged quickly when you realise that you're in a different event. I, uh, I'm into CrossFit a little bit. Does anybody know what CrossFit is? Just a little bit, okay? It's terrible. Yeah, it kind of is terrible. It's like, anyway, a, a type of fitness, okay? But, but they say, honestly... They fail. The athletes in CrossFit fail because basically you don't know necessarily what workout you're going to have to do. It just gets presented to you and you have to be ready for anything, right? So athletes fail when they, when they misinterpret the difficulties they're going to face. They don't understand how much a part of that workout is going to hurt. And so they go into it thinking, yep, I'll be fine. And they get to a point and they haven't realised, they haven't prepared for that moment. So you do well in CrossFit to ready yourself in your mind to say, you know what, I'm going to need to get through this. There are going to be moments where I'm going to want to stop. There are going to be moments where I'm going to want to give up. And I have to decide at the start that no matter how I feel then, I've already decided that at that point, I will not stop. I will keep going. But if you think here, it'll be fine, it'll be easy, I'll cruise through, then by the time you get to there, it's already too late. If you mentally prepare thinking that it's one event when it ends up being a different event, then this Christian life becomes confusing because you say, I thought that God was good. Why am I going through the things that I'm going through right now? I thought that God was faithful. How come that He hasn't answered my prayer yet? Well, for starters, you don't know what He's doing behind the scenes, but you've got to understand that God is not just after this being an easy life. He's after developing something in you because He knows what He's called you to. And what He's called you to is not going to be a accomplished by the you that you are right now. It's going to need some greater strength. It's going to need some greater endurance. It's going to need some greater maturity. Maturity in me is not developed when it's easy. It's developed in the moment that everything in my flesh is saying, lie down. But a predetermined conviction says, no. No. I will keep going. We need some Christians to predetermine that when I said yes to Jesus, I said, you know what? If I never experience what I hope to experience, and if things don't go the way that I thought that they were going to go, and if God seems to be blessing everybody else but me, and if everything in my flesh is saying, don't go to that. Just, you know what? And if everybody around me has said, that's enough. I'm not living for Jesus. You, we need some people that have said, I already said yes. I knew what race I was in. And I will run the race that God has set before me, no matter what comes against me. Run the race with Endurance. But here's the thing. If we're going to run an endurance race for the win, then we have to understand that every extra kilogram in an endurance race, it matters. That's why the Scripture said at the start, let me read it to you again, let us lay aside every weight. The New Living Translation says it like this. Let us 
strip off, and, and don't read this by the, the, the preaching of last Sunday, by the way, you'll misinterpret it. Let us strip off every weight. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. In the kind of race where you need endurance, extra weight and entanglement, entanglements are just not going to work. How many endurance runners are overweight? None. If your intention is to run this race for the prize, then every extra bit of baggage matters. And don't worry, athletes, I'm not talking about our physical appearance. I'm talking about the things that we are carrying eternally. The weight that we carry in this Christian life is not on the outside, right? It's on the inside. So let's just talk about this really quickly. Shake off the sin. It's time to shake off the sin. Some of us are still struggling with areas of sin because we're trying to battle it with just simply what's right versus what, what's wrong. And if your attention is just on, I know I should do the right thing, but I keep ending up, ending up doing the wrong thing, then you're gonna be in that battle a long time going around in circles. But if you understand that it has a lot to do with actually the race that you were called to win, then you start to see the sin very differently because you don't just see it as based on what's right and wrong. You start to see, realise that everything that is entangling you is holding you back from the race that you're called to win. So maybe it's not a matter of what I can get away with. It's a matter of what do I need to do away with in order to run without any impediment? Some of us are still wondering how close to the line can I get? What can I get away with with God? Well, you know what? His grace will always be greater than our sin. But if you wanna run to win, it's time to run as far away from that line as you can and say, it's not a matter of what other people are doing. It's not a matter of what society says is okay. It's a matter of the race that I know that I'm called to run. And that's why I can't afford to get involved in that stuff. You know, Pastor James mentioned that I wanted to live for Jesus as a teenager. And, and uh, you know, I had two older sisters that, that they, uh, you know, their, their lives as teenagers, they, they sort of, uh, they, they were pretty broken in their teen, teenage years. And, and they looked at me going through my teenage years and they said, how come this seems to be so easy for you to decide what you wanna do and what you don't wanna do? And I said, it has nothing to do with whether I'm strong or I'm not strong. It has everything to do with the fact that I'm consumed by the race that I'm on. I don't have time for what you thought you had time for. It's not that I, oh, I'm not tempted by sin anymore. No, my focus is the race. Some of us would be tempted a lot less if we stopped looking around us and just looked ahead to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. It's time to shake off the sin. It's time to decide that, you know what, that might have been okay last year. It might have been all right when I was just messing around. But if I'm gonna run the race that God has called me to run, it's time to shake off the sin. It's time to strip off the weights. I felt the Holy Spirit really draw my attention to this. To do with this area, the area of offence. These are some of the weights that we carry on the inside of our heart, right? The weight of offence or unforgiveness or hurt. These are things that sit like, not extra kilograms on the outside, but they sit like lead weights on the inside of our heart. It's possible to still lift your hands and worship. It's possible to still turn up to church and sit where you know to sit with your friends. It's possible that no one else knows what's going on. But on the inside, you lift your hands on the outside, but on, your in, on the inside, there is a heavy weight on the inside of your heart. And it's hard to run the race you're called to run when there's weight on the inside of your heart. And these weights, sometimes we, we focus on the sin stuff, but we don't focus as much on, on these things that we're allowing into our heart, which by the way, at the end of the day is still sin doesn't look like it, but when we're holding on to it, it is. Offence, hurt, unforgiveness, it has a way of, of slowing you down. You know, I began to think about, the Bible compares this to a running race, but what about, a, what about if you were swimming, which is relevant in Australia, everybody swims. What about if you were swimming? I remember doing... Uh, survival course. We have to do that in school, in, in high school, this survival course. And they practice, you have to jump in the pool with clothes on. But they teach you, if you wanna survive and you wanna make, if you're ever in this situation, what you need to remember to do, the first thing you need to remember to do is actually to pull those heavy clothes off because it's gonna be so much harder to swim with, with that because clothes, when you're on land, feel one way, but when you're in water, they get filled with water and they will weigh you down. 
Do you know what I began to think about it? Isn't it interesting that we put clothes on because we think they're gonna protect us? We put clothes on because we need it. But as soon as we're in the, in the water, the, the very things we put on to protect us will also hold us down and weigh us down. And so if you're going to keep swimming and you're gonna make it to shore, you're gonna make it to that finish line, you gotta be ready to, to do away with all of that weight and keep swimming. Here's the thing, you can hold on to, because listen, when you get offended in your heart, it's usually for good reason. Like every now and again, someone's just stupid and you're like, you're offended over nothing. But usually if you're living for Jesus, we get offended over things that are like, fair enough, that hurts. Somebody let you down. Somebody shouldn't have said that. That should never have happened. I've been through plenty of those things myself. In fact, the longer that I've been in church, the more opportunity there has been to be offended. Do you know what the Holy Spirit showed me? You can hold on to that offence if you want to and you can be right, but slow. Or you can let it go and run your race. But you can't do both. Maybe some of us are still holy. We got hurt by something. We got offended by something. We, we, man, the, the last few years of COVID, there are so many people walking around in church and, and we're still wounded on the inside. And you're a part of an amazing church. I know God's ministered to you, but maybe there are still people here. You go, man, there are still things going on on the inside. I didn't know, you know, we had people, our church handled it amazing, but there are still so many people that are like, leadership should have done this and they should have done, hey, well, why did we do that? Why did our church do it like this? You say, you can be right if you want, or we can keep running this race. Choose the way of life. What's the way of life? The way of life is constant surrender to Jesus. I lay down my rights. I lay down when I think I'm right because I wanna run the race that I'm called to run. So here's the thing, the Holy Spirit, He wants to help us this morning shake off sin. He wants to help us strip off the weight. He wants us to pick up the pace and run. How awesome is this Scripture? Romans 15 verse five, it says, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord in Christ Jesus. Did you catch that? He is the God of endurance. If you need endurance, He's got it because He's the God of endurance. If you need encouragement, He's got it because He is the God of encouragement. So if I don't like running because it's all based on my ability, it's okay. I need to make a decision in my heart that I'll keep running, but I'm not running this race based on my ability or my discipline or my strength. I'm, I'm still running this race because He is the God of endurance and He wants to fill me with endurance. He wants to fill me with encouragement. He wants to fill me with the power to keep going. And a while ago, actually at the start of COVID, I felt the Holy Spirit Said, ask me this question, Andy, do you want to be unstoppable? And I said, yes. He said, well, here's how to be unstoppable. Are you ready for it? I'll pass this key on to you for free. It's for free. Are you ready? Here you go. Here's how to be unstoppable. Decide that nothing will stop you. I am a genius. <laughs> no, the Holy Spirit is a genius. No, you simply, it's not, being unstoppable is not saying, I've got the power to get through everything. No, it's deciding that no matter what comes, I am not gonna face something that is going to have the power to stop me because I will keep going in Jesus' Name. Come on, we are unstoppable and we are victorious and we are getting stronger because we have a race to run. And it's not just Pastor James and Kate, it's every single one, there is the most incredible adventure ahead of you. But it's time to shake off the sin. It's, it's time to strip off the weight and it's time to pick up your pace. Man, I wanna minister, oh, the Holy Spirit wants to minister to some people in a moment. But before we, before we get to that, there's something so important to do. Would you just bow your heads, close your eyes or across this place? So I, I just wanna give people an opportunity right now to receive Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. That's what this is all about, man. It's what we love to do. That's what church is about this morning because it's not a bunch of good people deciding that we can worship because we're good people. It's a bunch of people that are filled with joy because we know what it is to be forgiven of our sins and to be given a brand new start and to be empowered to live this life. 
Pastor James said before that God is not a dead statue. He's, he is alive. He wants to be alive in your life and real in your life. The Bible says that we have all sinned. None of us deserve relationship with God. But the good news is still the good news that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to, to live a perfect life and to die upon a cross. And when He died on the cross, He wasn't punished for His sins. He took upon Himself the punishment for our sins so that you and I could freely receive grace, freely receive a right relationship with God. Today, have you ever invited Jesus to be the Lord and Saviour of your life? Or maybe you once did, but you're not walking with Him today. I wanna quickly pray with you and, 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 um, and give you that opportunity to, to say, that's me today. I'm not right with God. I need to be right with God. I need Him to forgive me. I, I need that brand new start. I need Him to be the Lord and Saviour of my life. Nobody else is looking around, but if that's you right now, would you lift your hand up high in the air and say, that's me, Andy, that's me. Just lift your hand up high. Awesome, in here in the middle, up the back, over the side there. Awesome, come on, lift your hand if that's you. Over the back there as well. Come on, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Lift your hand. You say, that's me, that's me, that's me. Awesome. I'm not right with God today or I'm, or I'm not sure, but I know that I need to respond to Him. Over there, awesome, man. So good. Others, come on, just a, a few more moments. Lift your hand if you haven't already. I'll see it. You, you can put it back down in a moment. Team are gonna see it so that we can pray with you. Just anybody else, this is the reason that you came to church today, friend. God loves you. He's got a plan for your life, but this is where it all begins by saying yes to Jesus. Come on, if that's you, you haven't lifted your hand already, quickly do it now, right up the back, awesome. Anybody else, as I look across, anybody else, lift your hand. Just give me a wave up there, awesome. So good. Well, all of us today, some of our team in a moment are gonna come around and encourage you if you just lifted your hand and you responded to God, but I just wanna pray with you. All of us, would we pray this after me? Say, God, today, I'm sorry for my sins, for trying to live life without You. I know that I need You. And Jesus, I believe You are the Son of God. You died on the cross for my sins. You rose again from the grave to give me new life. So I ask You to forgive me of all of my sins. Wash them away. Give me a new start. And I invite you into my life as my Lord, as my Saviour, as my best friend. Jesus, I'm ready to live for You. And just quickly, all of those who responded, I just wanna pray for you. Would you just lift your hand again? If you lifted your hand before, would you just lift your hand quickly now so I can see you, I know who I'm praying for. That's awesome. Others, there were more of you than that. Can you lift your hand just super quick? Holy Spirit, today, would you fill them? Fill them with power to live for Jesus. Would you reveal the love of God to them? Would you transform them? Form them? Would you give them a brand new start by making them born again? Transform from the inside out. And we declare that they belong to Jesus and that they will live for you for the rest of their life. In Jesus' Name. That's so awesome. Come on, church, will we give it up for these people today? Come on, would you go crazy for them? All those who responded. As I said, our team are going to just make sure that we get around you and encourage you. But I'd love the opportunity to just give us a moment to respond. Will we stand to our feet all across this place? Man, you guys are so awesome. It's been such a privilege to share with you this morning. Very sweaty though, you did warn me. They did warn me. Is there some stuff that you need to just shake off? Is there some weight on the inside that you need to strip off? Are you being stirred by the Holy Spirit? It's time to pick up my pace and run. Well, I think what we're gonna do is, I think we're just gonna open up the altars and the sides. Is that what you do here? Is that, is that good to do? That's legal? Fantastic. I think that's what we'll do. <laughs> not pre-arranged, but I think that's what we'll do. If, if you need to respond today, say there's some stuff that I need to just shake off or there's some stuff that, that, that I need to strip off. If that's you, then as we begin to worship, I want you to get out of your seat. Why is it important to do this, by the way? We do it all the time. It's important that I do something on the outside to represent what I'm doing on the inside. What am I doing? I'm moving. 
I'm leaving the place that I've been at and I'm positioning myself for what God has for me. So come on, as we worship from wherever, come on, as we worship, would you get ready to respond to Him? Need to shake some things off. Need to strip some things off. The team's gonna get ready to pray, but come on, would you respond to Him today?
a great Just quickly, before we just worship a bit longer, just feel God reminding me of just walking us through this process of, of letting go. Let go. See, maybe there's some people that we need to forgive. You say, I've done it before. Guess what? <laughs> Become a professional because we've got to do it for the rest of our lives. You keep forgiving. You, you, you keep walking through stuff, so you keep forgiving. Listen, listen, you don't let go of things because it doesn't matter anymore. And you don't let go of things because it's okay now or because it's right. I've decided a long time ago, I let go of things when they don't sound like my Father's voice. Simple. You don't sit in conversation with things any longer when it doesn't sound like your Father's voice. Some of us are still sitting in conversations with doubt and discouragement and negativity and hurt and all of this stuff. And you can sit there and the longer they talk, the more right they sound. But if it doesn't sound like your Father's voice, it's time to say, "Uh -uh, I've had enough of this conversation. I need to strip off that weight. I need to surrender. So we're gonna do, sometimes it helps, just like I got you to respond there, sometimes it helps doing something physical to give us some range for what's going on on the inside of our heart. So if there's something that you just feel like all across this place, we don't need to get out, but just wherever you are, there's something you just need to throw off, then I want you to do something right now, symbolic, take it with your hand. Are you ready? I'm, I'm doing it, take it with your hand. So you just scoop that thing out of your heart. Very good, very good. And just take it with your hand and then just hold it up high, hold it up high. This is what I wanna do. I'm gonna count to three and I want us to just cast it. The Bible says, cast your cares to the Lord. Stripping off this weight, I'm giving it to you, God. Come on, if you need to forgive people, then as you cast it to Him, you say, Lord, I forgive them in Jesus' Name. If you say, Lord, I just need to surrender that, then say, Lord, I surrender. I give it to You. I cast my cares onto You. And then we're gonna surrender, we're gonna worship and we're gonna worship freely, stripping off the weight and getting ready to run. Come on, if that's You, you're holding those things in your hand, you're ready to cast it on the Lord. I want you to physically, when I count to three, I want you to throw it, lift your hands and worship. You ready? One, Two, three, come on, throw it. That's it, forgive them, surrender, let go. We cast our cares to You, Lord. We cast our cares to You, Lord. This is a great outpouring. Strip off, throw off. Now pick up your pace and run. It's not time to go easy. It's not time to say, well, I'll just see what happens. It's time to pick up your pace and run this race. So we're gonna sing this bridge in just a moment. But I think there are some people all across this plate. You need to sing it with all of your heart. You need to, maybe you even need to start running on the spot. Saying, I'm running for you, God. And I've decided I'm gonna be unstoppable. I'm here for the win. And it's not that I'm competing against anybody else. It's that I will complete this race. I will run for Jesus and I will receive that reward. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hey. I can hear it. Sound of a rushing wave.
praise Him for the race that's coming. Begin to praise Him for the victory that's behind us that we're living in and 